Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So today what I want to do is take apart one of these 1990 style canister vacuum cleaners. A lot of memories with one of these. Uh, it was my Saturday chore to clean the house and we had a model just like this. The nice thing about these vacuum cleaners is there's a lot of great scrappable material on them. A lot of steel, some copper bearing motors, there's some brass. And unfortunately, this one does not work. Uh, you can, if you find these, sell them online. I have seen several of them, the exact same model, going for about $200 on eBay. Um, and they're also, the attachment parts that uh, go with these are also resellable. So that's a great thing. You're definitely going to make more money than scrapping this. This one, however, I am scrapping because it is in very bad condition. The motor doesn't work. There's a lot of pieces missing. Uh, I only actually have one brush on there, so all the other pieces are missing. Um, so this one will be scrapped, but as I said, before you scrap it, check to see if it works because it is gonna be worth a lot more reselling it online than scrapping it. But as I said, here we go with this one. The nice thing about this, uh, very easy to do. There is a lever there or a latch. This door will pop off. There will be the filter bag in there. This, unfortunately, in our municipality, this is plastic. This is non-recyclable, so this will go into the garbage. Um, you could sometimes add these attachments if you find one or two of them, if they're in great condition. You can put them on a shop vac or what have you. Um, this one, however, is too small. Uh, and it is very damaged and worn, so this is just going to go into the garbage. The hose, I do see a lot of people pass up a hose on a vacuum cleaner, and I really think it is a bad choice. The nice thing about these hoses, if I put a magnet to it and run it down the hose, this hose is actually magnetic, and that's because underneath this plastic, there is a large steel coil that goes all the way down this arm and as well inside here this arm is magnetic so this is, whole thing is going to be steel scrap yards are not going to care about the little bit of plastic on there it just gets burned away anyway and the nice thing about this this is going to go into my tin shred pile and currently that's about 10 to 13 cents a pound so there's a couple pounds here which is awesome there is also a little bit of brass I want to get off of here. This is what connects to the um, vacuum cleaner, the prongs there. There are some nice clean brass prongs there. As well, I have already cut the small wire. There is a small copper wire here that uh, will go into my 40% um, copper recovery bin, and I am going to talk about that in a minute. But again, this is going into tin shred. The other thing I see a lot of people pass up is the power head. The power head is your apparatus that will clean the carpets. The nice thing about this is you see a very nice long metallic pole, put a magnet to it so this whole thing is steel. As well, all the way down this arm you can see there is also a lot more um, copper wire that is going to go into my 40% copper wire pile. And currently this type of wire is actually going for $1.23 a pound Canadian, which is great. Um, so there's a lot of that on there. As well inside, if I remove this plastic cover and all I had to do, there was a small uh, rubberized um, outer coating. Just pull that off. I had to take a couple screws. You can see there's three really long screws. This cover, power head cover will pop off. And it will reveal inside there is a nice copper bearing motor. So this copper bearing motor, it just um, fastened in with a couple screws. I apologize right now with the uh, glare off of that steel. The sun is coming out at times. And actually we just had a first snowfall here as I was on my way home from school today. So I'm glad I was able to fit in a video. So you're going to get spots of sunshine. I'm going to keep as much of that as I can as possible. But as you can see, really nice copper bearing motor. There is going to be right here a box that is going to have a silver contact in there. 
So a little small piece of silver, anytime you have a button that clicks, there is brass ends in there, and inside that is going to be a little spool of copper as well as a small dot of silver that I will put into my silver recovery bin. Here is actually a really nice, heavy copper bearing motor. You can see inside there is the copper inside of that. I could bring one of these in as is and get 10 to 15 cents a pound Canadian as is. However, because it's copper, I can see it's copper and I've actually scratched it already. This is the copper windings are actually copper and that copper right now is actually going for number two copper which is currently going for four dollars and 23 cents a pound Canadian which is way better than the price I'm going to get for the the motor here. So I am going to remove these bolts after and take out the copper. I am for the sake of this video going to remove one of the motors. Uh, the bigger one that is from this machine just to show you how to do it, but it's very simple. So again, a nice copper bearing motor. As well, there are a couple things. Sometimes the wheels uh, or the brushes will have a nice long pole of steel through it. So easy to check, put a magnet to it. There is a bolt in there, it is going to stick. So this I actually will throw in this uh, brush into my steel as well. I do want to remove all of this copper wire that I'm going to take as well. There's lots of it running through here. As you can see, little strands of it, but it all adds up. There you go. So as I said, a lot of times people will pass these up and I don't know why. So some great copper wire there and some nice brass and silver contact as well. The rest of this, unfortunately, this head is going to be garbage. Um, this is actually a Panasonic model. The one I had at home was a Kenmore, but again, very, very similar. I could probably navigate through this with my eyes closed. Um, inside, I'm gonna show you the bucket there. You can see the cord does go all the way through here as well. If I take the back panel off, there again, a little bit more plastic. I'm gonna turn this. Here is some plastic. I'm just gonna cut the rest of this off just so I can remove it. Um, hopefully you can see that. Um, uh, here is another money maker that a lot of people, most people will take. Um, they believe this is really the real the thing that's worthwhile and the only thing worthwhile is the plug from the vacuum cleaner. Very heavy, very nice spool of copper. And just gonna cut that out. You do wanna be very careful of these once you take these out because right now it is fastened in. You can see a huge spool of what is called 40% copper recovery. And there's probably about two and a half pounds of it in here. So two and a half pounds times a dollar 23 a pound. So that's a great score. There is also, as you can see, steel that connects it. Um, but as I said, you do want to be careful when you pull that out because this is wound around a tight steel spring. And once you remove this protective plate and remove that uh, copper wire, if you are not holding on to that spool of or that spring of um, uh, tin or whatever you call that spool, it can open up and act like a slinky and potentially get you in the eye. So you definitely want to be careful of that. Uh, handle it with caution. I suggest safety glasses anytime you're using um, uh, tools or scrapping, but uh, you definitely want to be careful with that. But as I said, a really nice spool of copper wire. And the reason I keep saying 40% copper recovery is because when you deal with appliance wire, there is 40% and 60% copper recovery. What these scrapyards look at is the amount of copper to plastic ratio. If I look inside of this, there are two strands of copper wire that have their own individual uh, coating as well as an outer coating. That means there is more plastic on here, so this would be $1.23. If this only had one layer of plastic uh, or single coating of plastic, there's more copper, less plastic, so that would be my 60% copper recovery and go currently for $2.13 a pound. So you do want to make sure you separate these. Uh, as well, I did cut this cord. Um, I do remove the brass prongs. I will put the brass into my um, brass recovery bin, which is going for about uh, $2.85 a pound Canadian. 
Uh, this is coated brass, but you can put it with your um, uh, yellow brass. The rest of this, because there is still copper inside of this and brass, I'm still gonna throw this into my appliance wire, my 40% copper recovery. Okay, so nice wire here with some steel. Here is my motor. Uh, again, I'm just going to cut that. I do want to make sure I remove the rest of this wire out of here. It just slides out, as you can see. Very easy to cut that out. Um, it's just connected right there. But the rest of this box, unfortunately, is going to go into the garbage. Um, but, uh, you know, again, there is actually, actually, nope, that is plastic, unfortunately. But a little bit of waste. Here I have a really nice motor. And as you can see, there is the copper. All I want to do first is I want to scratch it to make sure that it is in fact copper. So very simple. All I do is I take a file. I'm going to scratch it. And as you can see inside of that, that is a really nice thing of copper there. Very, very good. So that is going to be number two copper. There are some bolts around here that I do have to remove. Uh, there's a little bit of paper, as you can see there. Uh, but again, this copper is going to go for number two price. And again, first thing I need to do is I need to actually hit this off. But um, this, because it is bolted in, I'm just going to unbolt it. So do that first. All right, get my tools set up there. Where's my screwdriver? Fortunately, now that I have all my, there it is, right on the ground. So I'm just going to unscrew that. I'm hoping this glare does not interfere. But I do have a lot of people, while I'm taking this apart, um, talk about, especially now, they refuse to get vacuum cleaners because they believe that the motors now have all become aluminum coiled instead of copper. And that is not entirely true. Um, I find honestly about 50%, doesn't matter if it's a new one or an old one, uh, I find all of them. So definitely worth, in my opinion, it worth to check. Put a magnet to that, here's some more steel. Uh, this is about like a pound, which is great. Um, to get at this inner part, I do just want to use a hammer. I'm just gonna hit that off. So very simple. So a little bit more tin, and as you can see inside of here, there is an aluminum wheel. And in order to get this aluminum off, I do have to make sure I get that bolt. So I'm gonna get a pair of my vice grips. And I do always wear a pair of gloves when I'm doing this because unfortunately, that aluminum can be very sharp. Uh, I cut myself a few times on it, but uh, you know, Definitely want to make sure I cut down on injury, but just gonna put this actually in my vise Okay, so this aluminum is gonna go for clean aluminum um, And again, I could throw this motor in as is into my motor pile. It's actually I believe about uh, four pounds of motor price or 40 cents, but as I said way better price getting that number two copper. So just gonna check that, get that on there, my vice grip. And just turn it, give it a little turn, done. That easy. Okay, so I always keep these nuts, they're a great condition. Okay, but really nice aluminum wheel there. I have a little bit more steel here. And all I'm gonna do actually now, very simple, just gonna Take a hammer, see, oh, there's a couple more bolts I have to take out. But as soon as I'm done this, it's gonna be very easy to pull out. Uh, and someone actually will say to me, why don't I use a drill? Uh, yes, a drill is faster, but I find this very therapeutic actually, uh, which is awesome. You know, it lets me relax a little bit, um, you know, think about what I'm doing, separate the material properly, uh, and you know, kind of just work outdoors or work in my garage. A little in peace. Sometimes try to get away from the kids. But, uh, you know, 
Definitely could have sped up the process, but it's very easy, just four bolts here. I'm gonna take those out, and this will come off. Now that I have the bolts out, uh, they should, the holder should slide out, there it is. I'm gonna use a hammer, just back this out. Okay, so this is now off. There are, oh, I think I just gotta hit that again. Sometimes there is a bolt, and if I'm not seeing it, that's part of the problem. But I think there is, I think it's connected, this one. This is a harder style, so I think I'm just gonna hit the top of this. Again, every model is different, but I don't see, oh, I do see a screw, there it is. All right, that is gonna speed it up. There is, that's definitely gonna speed it up. So unfortunately, I did not see that screw there, but that's what's always nice there. You can see two long ones of these. I'm gonna hit this one out. As you can see, now it's starting to fall apart, which is great. I think I already broke this one. So now this is gonna fall out. There we go. And unfortunately, because I didn't break that, I'm gonna to have to now do a little bit more work. Okay, but I can leave that. Uh, the nice thing about that, as you can see, is the rest of this is gonna go into my steel pile, but I wanna get this copper. All I'm gonna do is take a grinder, cut down one, two incisions and then turn it over. And the nice thing about this is the rest of this is gonna go in my steel pile. Here again is a lot more, uh, this is actually gonna be your example of 60% copper recovery, because as I said, one coating of uh, coating and copper wire inside. So definitely wanna separate it. Um, as well, there is some brass in these orange things where there's some yellow brass I'm gonna take. So again, just gonna make two incisions with my grinder. The sparks did not come from the um, copper. It came from, just to show me or tell me that the um, cut has gone through. And all I do is I actually just take a pry bar now. And as you can see, it is just gonna very easily slide up. Just use leverage in my bench. There it is. Very nice. Look at that. Look how beautiful and thick that is. There's one. So two here, just get it rolling around. Oh, well, there we go, I just snuck it out. That's part of the reason I like to wear safety glasses. So I have right here probably about seven to eight ounces of copper, which is awesome. As well, this is also, uh, I am not gonna take the copper out of this, but this is gonna go into my copper bearing motor. This right here weighs a good uh, two pounds. But again, actually this is probably almost a pound, so almost $4.23 here. Again, nice thing now, I have the rest of this. This is going to go in my steel pile. And again, part of my motor as well, steel as well. So great item to, to take apart, very simple to do. I've got a great 40% long, two and a half to three pound cord. I have some beautiful copper, number two copper from the motor, from this motor. I also have the other motor I still need to get the copper from, so probably gonna have about a pound and a half of copper, as well as the two inner cores. I'm still gonna have about uh, three pounds of that. A lot of steel, um, a lot of, I have silver, I have some brass, uh, and again, I've got some hose as well. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.